Hi, this is Helen Grant. I'm the author of The Glass Demon, which was Club Fantasy's April book of the month. And I've just been watching um, The Club, which is a kind of online book club, um, discussing the book on YouTube. So I thought it would be nice to add some of my own thoughts to that discussion. So first of all, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everyone that contributed to that. So that's um, Chris, Dion, Chiara and David. It's really a thrill for me as the author of the book to see somebody taking it that seriously, I guess. Um, so anyway, I've made a few notes and I thought I'd just give you some of my thoughts about the, the uh, topics that were raised. Um, first of all, there was a bit of a chat about the genre and whether um, The Glass Demon fits into any particular sort of genre. Um, and it is quite interesting for me because... I don't, I suppose myself, tend to think of it as a horror book exactly because um, the explanation at the end of the book isn't really a supernatural one. But before I wrote full-length novels, I used to write ghost stories. And so I am interested in that whole kind of genre, horror and supernatural speculative fiction. And so um, I enjoyed having the elements in the book which suggested that there was something supernatural going on. Um, as regards whether or not there is a demon, it is perfectly true that there isn't literally a demon like the one in the legend in the story, um, kind of Bon Chariot, this nasty thing that haunts the glass. But in a way, I felt that kind of allegorically, there is a demon. There's, uh, in fact, there's several demons, really. There's the actual perpetrator of the crimes who, who has this kind of mania. Um, there's also... Uh, the personal demons which some of the characters in the book have, like um, Polly has the anorexia and um, Lynn's father has his obsession with fame and with getting his hands on this stained glass. So I felt in that sense there were still demons in the book and that's why it says in one of the later scenes that Lynn's father still hasn't cast out his demon. So anyway, that was just a bit of food for thought. Um, as regards the YA genre and... Um, how the book fits into that. That's also kind of an interesting topic and one that there isn't really an easy answer to because um, I don't really see myself as consciously writing young adult literature. I think that if I did try and write for teenagers that it would probably be a bit cringy because after all I'm not a teenager anymore though I have been one. Um, I really just write the kind of book that I want to write and that I would enjoy reading. But I'm naturally drawn towards younger heroines because um, I think that they're open to a lot of things that adults wouldn't be. For example, if you are a child, then you might believe certain things. You might be prepared to do certain things, which as an adult, you wouldn't. I mean, an adult probably wouldn't really seriously entertain the prospect that there was actually um, a demon running around out there. So from, from that point of view, I had solid reasons for, for always having a young protagonist. Um, the reason that the books tended to be pitched to the young adult market is more really a marketing one, I think, because it's the, the books don't tend that I've written so far don't tend to be that violent. They tend to be nasty discoveries. And I think that adult crime or thrillers would probably be a lot more bloody than that and a lot more brutal. Um, and also, I think people just tend to assume that it's aimed at the YA market because the protagonist is, is young, a teenager, or in the case of my first book, even younger. Um, but like I say, I don't consciously write for anybody other, really, than myself. Um, somebody mentioned as well the first person, the, back, the fact that the book is written in the first person. And that's something which I did for my first three novels and um, for all of my, well, for most of my short stories. Um, it was simply because that felt like a natural way to write for me. But I am kind of coming to the end of that now because it does have its limitations. And the biggest one is that if you have somebody telling the story, then it's obvious that they're going to survive till the end. So the books that I'm working on at the moment, there's a new trilogy which are set in Flanders in Belgium, are in the third person specifically to try and get around that. So you don't actually know whether everybody's going to survive till the last reel. Um, I know it is possible to have a narrator die at the end of the book, but I think if you have one of these situations where they say, oh, well, and then I realised I was dead and the whole thing's a ghost story, it's a bit of a cliche now, so I would really avoid that. So, um, yeah, so now I'm playing with third person instead. Um, there was a couple of other small points. One is the um, the timelessness and the fact that, that, um, that 
brand names are only really mentioned when it comes to kind of the fashion items and I haven't specified what type of phone uh, Lynn has, what kind of laptop anybody has or anything like that and that was kind of a conscious thing. The only reason why I've mentioned the brands in relation to Tuesday is because she is so kind of obsessed with these things like I think I've said somewhere that she knows every single type of different Hermes handbag but probably couldn't remember her own pin number. Um, and I think the only times that Lynn really mentions these brands is when it's in relation to Tuesday because she herself isn't that kind of person. Uh, as regards her name, Lindisfarne, um, I chose that name because it's kind of the ultimate sort of hippie new age type of name, I think. Um, there's actually an island with that name off um, North England and it's a holy island. I think there was an abbey or something on it. It um, is also very well known in Britain because there was um, a series of beautiful manuscripts that were uh, produced. I think there's an 8th century, I think it is, um, illuminated manuscript from there. Um, and also there was a 1970s kind of folky band as well with the same name. So it's really a bit kind of new age kind of hippie thing. And it certainly is a name that you would really cringe if it was, <laughs> if it was your first name. Um, the only other point I think was Tuesday's late baby and to be honest um, I hadn't really thought about whether he was an accident or not. I did at least do the math and try and work out that it was possible for her to have older teenagers and still have a very young child like that but the main reason for having him there really was because of this dynamic going on that poor um, Polly is always being treated as though she's the mother and she's doing all the donkey work and once again Tuesday is kind of showing her true colours as a mother except that at the end of the book where she runs away again this time she chooses to take the little one with her so you think that maybe to a certain extent she has moved on a little bit so so that was kind of the extent of my thinking about that anyway those are my thoughts um thank you so much for reviewing the book um and uh goodbye <laughs>